Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to my YouTube channel. We're going to take flight here again today with another Skies of Ace Combat video. And I'm actually going to be talking about the General Dynamics F-16, which is what you're seeing gameplay here footage of, which is the F-16C, which is a single-seat, single-engine air superiority fighter. However, over its initial release, it would be upgraded into an all-weather multi-role fighter. So far, over... 4,600 F-16s have been produced since its initial production run that started in 1976. Although the F-16 is no longer being produced for the United States Air Force, it has gained many sales on the export market. The official name of the F-16 is Fighting Falcon, but it is also re commonly, recurred to, commonly referred to as Viper. And that's actually a Battlestar Galactica reference. Not sure if I fully understand the reference, but ah, there you go. That's what it is. The F-16 is still currently in active service with the Air Force. It is also in active service with the Air Force Reserve Command and the Air National Guard. Now, for those of you who don't know, have never heard of it before, the Air Force Reserve Command is more or less the Air Force version of the Army Reserve. People tend to know, of all the reservists, they tend to know that one. The F-16 is also flown by the United States Air Force Thunderbirds. That is the Air Force equivalent of the Blue Angels. It is used also by the U.S. Navy as an aggressor training plane. So it's, uh, whenever they're doing trainings, they'll use the F-16 as an aggressor. So it's actually got pretty wide service throughout all the branches, really. The F-16 is also produced for 25 other countries, making the F-16 the most numerous fixed-wing military plane in service. Production, sorry, the early development would begin with lessons learned in the Vietnam War. Lessons learned revealed that there was a need for an air superiority fighter with better air-to-air -air training for the pilots. In 1969, the Department of Defense funded a study of the energy maneuverability theory. The theory was developed by Colonel John Boyd and Thomas Christie. The concept of the theory was that a lightweight plane could maneuver much better at high speeds and lose less energy based on power to weight ratios. General Dynamics and Northrop was charged with proving the theory and after a series of testing, they proved the theory to be true. These tests would lead to the development of the YF-16 as well as the YF-17. Both planes would take their first flight in 1974, and after a series of tests, the YF-16 was adopted for Air Force service. However, this was not the end of the YF-17, as it would be redesigned, and it would enter service as the y, uh, as the F-18. That's something I'm going to cover more later in another video when I actually talk about the F-18. The initial production of the F-16 was the F-16A, which was a single-seat variant, and the F-16B, which was a two-seat variant. This includes blocks 1, 5, 10, 15, and 20 versions. The next version to enter service was the F-16C, which was a single-seat version, and the F-16D, which was a two-seat version. Now, from what I understand, Looking at it, it looks like mostly the 2C versions of the F-16s are just really trainers. When it comes to the planes actually being used as fighters, they're typically just the single seat variants. At least that's what I was able to glean in my research, and that's like coming from the United States Air Force, not other countries around the world. I mean, who knows, maybe Poland's using F-16Ds as bombers. I don't know. 
These versions would enter production in 1984. The initial variant was the Block 25. It had improved avionics and added all-weather capability. Other versions of the F-16C would include the Block 3032, the 4042, and the 5052, which actually Portland just got some 5052s. They're pretty cool because they have like these form-fitted fuel tanks that goes around the uh, side of the plane, around the uh, fuselage. And I'm going to get more into that in a bit. Other variants were developed as well. There was also some other prototype variants that would branch off from the F-16. A proposed variant was the Vought Model 1600, which was actually a, a naval version, if you will. There was also the NF-16D Vista, which was an experimental fighter. In the 1980s, General Dynamics produced the F-16XL Technology Demonstrator, which is very different compared to what we're used to. I mean, this is a Delta Wayne design of the M-16, if you will. And this is actually also in Ace Combat. So that's kind of cool. And the Mitsubishi F-2, which was actually designed and produced in the 90s based on the F-16 by Mitsubishi. This is essentially a Japanese version of the F-16. And this is also in Ace Combat as well. Actually, there's two different versions in Ace Combat. The F-16... The F-16 Block 50 is armed with an M61A1 20mm Vulcan cannon. The F-16 has a pylon rail on each wing tip. It has six pylons under the wings. That's three per wing. And an additional three pylons under the fuselage itself. And it is capable of carrying up to 17,000 pounds of ordnance. Can't carry much more than that, though. On its stores. The F-16 can carry a very wide variety of ordnance, including nuclear bombs. Current operators of the F-16 outside of the United States includes Belgium, Chile, Denmark, Greece, Israel, Netherlands, and Thailand, just to name a few of them. That literally only names about half of them. Now, Italy had these planes, but they had, they had retired their F-16s in 2012. And then Norway also had these planes, but apparently they just actually retired their last F-16s this year. So they've been working on replacing the F-16s as well. Now, uh, as a little snippet, so there's, for those of us who has Ace Combat, the best plane to look at is the F-2 Super Kai, which is the, uh, the F-2 SK. Uh, It'll give you a better look of what the Block 52 version of this, of the F-16C looks like. And essentially what it is, is it's got additional fuel tanks, as well as there's some additional other upgrades to the avionics, radar, and etc. to those planes to make them more effective. But the biggest problem with this plane, and this is just information I've gleaned from pilots talking about the F-16, is... While the F-16 is a really good performing plane as a fighter, its biggest flaw is the fact that it really does not have legs. It's not an endurance plane. They're constantly in need of fuel. And I guess at the end of the day, what you can argue is as well, that's the price for performance. When it comes to fighters, when it, when it comes to like an on, you know, one versus one dog fight, of course, pilot skill becomes a factor but you're better off in probably the F-16 over many of the other planes that the United States currently has in service short of maybe the F-22 Raptor but you know going by information even like an F you know while the while the F-15 is really good at what it does it's not a really good dogfighter compared to the F-16 
of course, that's compared to the F-16. Uh, we can make caveats on, well, how's the F-15 versus other world planes? And so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty solid plane. It's always performed really well for the United States, or at least that I'm aware of it. The United States has never felt like, you know, the, the Air Force has never felt like this plane did not perform its duty. Uh, it is an aging plane, though. So there is that argument of how much longer is this plane going to be a viable plane. And, yeah, there's upgrade programs, and there's other variants, other variants I did not even mention. That's going to keep this plane for a, a viable plane, maybe for other countries. But a viable plane for the United States, I really don't know how much longer this plane really has. And considering that the Air Force hasn't bought one of these in like two decades, I would guess that the Air Force doesn't think that these F-16s are going to last too much longer either. But hey, that's neither here nor there. The F-16s here right now, it does the job. It is a really good solid fighter. And honestly, when it comes to ace combat, I feel that in ace combat, it's actually a little underwhelming. I mean, this this is a starter plane in ace combat, and it definitely should not be. It's, I think the starter planes was, if I recall correctly, the F-104 and the F-16. And yeah, I mean, like the F-16 is definitely should be much better than they give it credit for, but Whatever, you know, this actually isn't a simulator. It's just a fun arcade game to fly around and shoot down planes and things of that nature. As you can see here, I actually did pretty well right there. But anyway, folks, that is my video on the F-16. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in. And please, help a, help a YouTuber out. Share these videos. Like, subscribe to the channel, the whole nine yards. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in. And have yourself a wonderful day.